Hello, everyone, and welcome. We are so grateful you have joined us this evening. My name is Al Catrone. I'm Vice President of Enrollment here at the University of St. Thomas. Uh, we are thrilled to have everybody here. It's the Tuesday after Thanksgiving in what is a very unusual senior year of high school, I think, for everyone. Uh, and we are here to kind of help you to look forward and think a little bit more about what might come next year as, uh, as you contemplate your future and uh, which university you'll attend. And in particular tonight, uh, the career or post undergrad aspects of that decision. A couple of quick housekeeping announcements. I'll be on here at the beginning and come back a little bit later uh, for question and answers. We've got several panelists, uh, combination of colleagues and faculty and uh, students and alumni all lined up this evening to touch base with you. Um, you are all muted for this evening simply because that helps us to not have background noise and uh, too much other things that interfere with the overall presentation. Uh, there is a Q&A function at the bottom of your uh, Zoom screen. If you move your cursor, you can see the Q&A icon down there. Uh, we will be monitoring those and kind of picking some of those and sharing those toward the end of the hour together that we have here. So if you have a question, don't hesitate to type it into the Q&A function. Uh, we will also event be um, uh, recording and posting our presentation tonight in case there's things you miss or you want to go back and hear and hear again. Um, I will share a few thoughts that I have uh, from my years of working in higher education uh, and for a while career services before I came into uh, admissions here. Uh, and then we'll go through some of our panelists tonight who will each share a slightly different perspective for you to consider uh, as you consider how the career theme plays into your decision about, about college. Finally, then, as we wrap up at five o'clock, um, we have some of our ambassador current students who will be waiting in some chat rooms for you to touch base with uh, if you want to hear what it's really like to be here now and how our year is going, how their experience has been, uh, and begin to get a look at what it might be like for you as you move forward. Um, so those are the housekeeping items I want to touch on. Uh, as we mentioned, as I said, tonight, uh, the title on our screen is, you know, how does St. Thomas connect you to your career? Um, I kind of prefer to think of that as how will we correct you to connect you to what you might do after you finish your undergraduate experience. Uh, and I say that because a career is almost too confining. Uh, I have seen over a number of years the variety of paths that people pursue, and it is really, really quite different, and it changes. Um, I could put them under a bell curve because we are an academic institution and we try to put everything under a bell curve if we possibly can. Uh, there are some, some people who are straight liners who study something, for example, accounting, and then become an accountant and stay an accountant for their, for their entire life. There are some who um, are what I call back turners, who start out studying something they really think they they love and they're going to want, and they discover that they don't, and they say, I'm not going to do that anymore. And then there's a big group, I think, that's in the middle that's called evolvers who take what they've learned and their experiences and change over time. I know for myself, the number of people I know who are doing something today that is not necessarily exactly what they studied as an undergrad is huge. And it's a great testimony to what you can do with an education and to the value of that undergraduate degree that it gives you that flexibility to pursue where you wanna go. Um, I'll highlight these real quickly. I know that I thought when I was 18 years old that I was a straight liner, I loved accounting. I wanted to go into accounting and be a CPA and I studied that and I graduated and I got my certified public accountants title and I went off and I did that for six or seven years and I really didn't like it very much. But I was able to change and do different things. And today, here I am, a vice president of enrollment. So I became really more of a back turner. I turned my back on accounting and said, what else can I do? That undergraduate education, as will your St. Thomas education, afforded me what I needed to kind of make that change as I learned, OK, I thought I liked this. I did it for a while. I didn't want to do it. So I've done something else. And, and now here I am. Now, my son, who was my second born, he was a straight liner. Jack loved uh, water resource management and the environment. He got an undergraduate degree in that. Uh, and we weren't quite ready. You, if you study a science, you're probably going to get a master's degree. And you're going to be doing some different things like fellowships and maybe some low paid or unpaid, hopefully not unpaid, but low paid internships to gain experience before you go on to that career. Now today, Jack is in the state of Michigan, and he works for the Department of Natural Resources and their water resource management. Uh, and so he likes to say he is the ghost busters of water resource management. If something goes wrong with water somewhere in the state, he and his team go and 
and check it out. Uh, my favorite one is that there was green ooze coming out of the retaining wall on Interstate 694, and they had to go check that out and see just what that was. I, I don't know that they ever did figure out exactly what that was, but he sure loved checking out the green ooze on the freeway. And then my daughter, who is my oldest, uh, was kind of the one who did the evolution. She studied math and economics. And I remember thinking, what is she going to do with that? I encouraged her, as parents will do, but I still in the back of my mind said, what's she going to do with math and economics? She wound up consulting for a short time for uh, charter schools in California uh, and then went and got an MBA. And today she is in her second year at Tesla overseeing some of their financial operations and uh, working with Tesla, the automotive company out in California. So she took her undergraduate degree and evolved it from math and econ through an MBA into a financial position at Tesla, which is kind of a neat and fun thing to talk about. Not as good as green goo, but it's, it's right up there as far as that goes. Uh, my point being that I think a lot of you will find that over the time uh, of your life and your career, you're going to change, you're going to do different things, or you may be that person who goes straight. The key for us at St. Thomas becomes to prepare you give you the support and the flexibility, the coaching and the experience and the advice that helps you to know and explore, make those changes smoothly, leverage our, our alumni so that you too can say, gosh, I love what I started out and I wanna stay on it, or I wanna turn my back on what I started out doing, can I still do it as a Tommy? Or, hey, I'm gonna study liberal arts, I'm gonna get this great broad education, it's gonna teach me how to think, and then one day my master's degree will be my vocational degree, and that's gonna launch me into my career and my life's work. So that's how we view our job, and that's what we're here tonight is to kind of show you the different ways that we can help you to do that. Uh, and so with that, I would like to introduce my colleague Jennifer Rogers, who is our Associate Director in Employee Relations and works in the Career Center, to kind of reflect on what you can do and how our team will be here to help you as you contemplate your future and where you'd like to go. Jennifer? Thank you, Al. Thanks for that introduction. I loved your story. I, I'm a theater major, <laughs> so if, if I do something funny, you'll know why. Uh, but I know exactly what you mean about that career path moving and, and it's always evolving. As you say, I didn't enter graduate school till almost 10 years after my undergraduate degree and uh, wound up with an educational psychology master's and higher education. So. This is partly what we do here. Um, my message to all of you is that the career services that are available to students should not be utilized in the very last semester <laughs> that you're at St. Thomas. Uh, I am here to invite you to interact with the Career Development Center staff and our programs and our services throughout the four years of the college degree. And these slides that we're gonna show will kind of give you examples of how you can interact with us. We'll take next slide, please. So the first thing just shares in general, what kind of questions do we help you answer and what kind of information uh, do we provide to students? So that first question that what can I do with my major is a very common one in our office. And that can go anywhere from the student who um, has narrowed down their options. Well, I think I'm thinking of two or three different majors. I'm just trying to decide between them need some more information about what I might do to the person who is wide open and saying, I really have no idea what I want to major in. Uh, the career inventories that are referred to here are sometimes really helpful with those students who say, I'm wide open. Uh, and our staff are trained to work with a number of different career inventories and we would help uh, a student identify which ones would be most helpful. Uh, the, the next couple are probably things that most people think about in terms of a career uh, service, which is we help students with that internship and job search process. Uh, what is the most successful and effective strategy to employ to find them? Where do you find them? And, and the networking piece, we know 75 to 80% of individuals who are successful in finding that thing they're looking for, usually founded through some kind of a networking, or as I like to call it, a connections process. It's not who you know, but it's who knows you. Uh, LinkedIn is one of the tools that we uh, help students understand and we coach people on how it's used. Uh, of course, we coach on resume and cover letter writing and how to interview. Uh, and the last one on this slide is maybe not a topic that everybody understands that our staff help with, but it's that decision-making process. Uh, if, if these are your career interests, 
is that going to require, I think Al actually just alluded to that, maybe a lot of science majors may want to expect at least a master's degree. So we help you understand what's gonna be necessary, um, timing, when graduate school be appropriate, how to locate programs, and then what's involved in the application process. So our staff can help with all of those topics as well. Next slide, please, thanks. And I wanted to give you a little more specifics about our uh, some of the programs that we offer in the Career Development Center. Uh, I work specifically with employers, so a lot of these um, involve some of the employer pieces. Uh, our on-campus interview program is where major corporate employers are, well, maybe not this year they're on campus, but normally they're on campus here um, conducting their screening interviews for their summer internships and their full-time jobs, uh, or for those accountants of the world, their tax season and busy season internships. And we facilitate those connections, that starting off point with students and employers. Um, the next note here says, talks about career fair, fairs, whether those are off-campus fairs, whether they're statewide fa fairs, whether they're on-campus fairs, we are um, the hub for information to help students understand how they can connect with employers in various fairs. And we also work, I work with various employers from a variety of different industries and bring panels like this um, to, to life, we should say, to help students learn about what their career options might be and again, to connect with employers. Uh, mock interviews are very specific types of appointments where our staff will role play with students and we pretend we're the recruiter asking interview questions and we give students the chance to videotape themselves and practice answering questions out loud. It's extremely helpful. Um, and our online resources are second to none. Uh, all of our workshops that are also, the topics can be handled in a group format, which we offer. And we've been doing everything online um, including the appointments and pop-ins in this COVID time. So we haven't missed a beat. Uh, we're doing everything uh, virtually and it works just fine. One-on-one um, -on -one appointments are available or if you, don't, if you can't make an appointment in advance, every day there are options uh, for students to connect with a Career Center staff member for a quick question. Next slide, thanks. And I'm just sharing with you uh, some of the wisdom that I've learned from the recruiters and the employers I've worked with over the years, which is what are they looking for really on a resume? And it's not necessarily the name of your major at the top of your resume, that may work for some people, but it's all of these other things that employers are really focusing in on. What kind of part-time jobs uh, has a student had, whether it's on campus or off campus, what kinds of summer jobs, what kinds of internships, uh, as a student connected with. And I want to just remind people that internships don't just happen in the summer, but many employers are hiring students part-time during the academic year as well. Um, their co-curricular activities are very important to employers and to students' knowledge and enrichment. We can help connect you and I recommend student clubs, organizations. Of course, there are many sports, athletics. We have music programs. All of this is teaches students many, many skills. Um, we have research opportunities with faculty. Um, their volunteer and community service makes you look like a well-rounded individual. It's built right into the College of Business program. Uh, Dr. Lewis can tell you about that. that there are so many hours that are required. That just shows you how valuable service is. And we want every student um, to be giving back in that way. And study abroad is a very important learning tool. And if you have the chance to do that, we highly recommend learning from study abroad. And next slide. Uh, the last major content slide here is what is the St. Thomas advantage? And again, working with employers, I can tell you it's our location that is key here. We are smack dab between both St. Paul and Minneapolis, major metro areas. We are home to 17 Fortune 500 corporate headquarters. And one of the other pieces that most people don't realize is that the Twin Cities is home to a wide, diverse group of industries. And that is what has protected us from most recessions. Uh, meaning not that we aren't affected by a recession, but the Twin Cities usually comes out of recessions much faster as a result of the diversity in our employer uh, base here. So that's a key, key advantage here. And employers tell me that they are purposely seeking out St. Thomas students for their internships and their jobs. Uh, we are sometimes one of the top two or three schools that they decide to recruit from here. 
Uh, that's exciting for me to hear. Uh, and know that any student that comes to St. Thomas receives high touch, individualized support. It's not just cookie cutter. We talk to students about their interests and their passions, and we help you devise strategies to get you where you want to go uh, to meet those career dreams and goals. And the last piece here is the Tommy Network is a huge advantage. It is true that Tommy's help Tommy's, whether it's that um, alumni that will be able to mentor and give career information and advice, or that's the employers. I just met with two, um, uh, two people today, this morning, who are recruiters now, who are hiring in their company, and they're coming to St. Thomas first, and they're focusing their efforts because they're Tommies, and, and they want to give back, and they want to hire other Tommies. Next slide. I'm not going to read this to you necessarily, but um, I was told that these are powerful statements. Why do employers recruit from St. Thomas? They find great talent here. And a couple of the, the um, characteristics that employers have told us our students provide is enthusiasm. They're very motivated and they're quite mature uh, and, and they're excited. Uh, they're excellent communicators, excited to share their gifts and talents with the world. Very driven. And next slide. This is just a sampling of the types of major corporations that will be recruiting through our office and on campus. So we just wanted to give you kind of a sense of the types of companies from United Health Group to public accounting firms uh, to our, of course, our backdoor Target, US Bank, Friends, Medtronic, folks like that. And that's just a small sampling. I'll be happy to answer questions at the end and I'm introducing my colleague, Michael Getty, who's our pre-health advisor. Thank you, Jennifer. It's nice to be with you all. Uh, I'm Michael Getty. I'm the pre-health advisor at St. Thomas. And I have a lot of conversations throughout the year with prospective students and families. And one of the things I offer is that, uh, is, is basically my wish that wherever they end up going to college, that place should have a person or an office whose only purpose is to support students on their way towards one of the health professions. And so I wanna talk about how um, St. Thomas does that in addition to having somebody such as myself, whose job it is to be the advisor, um, applying to a life in the healing professions really is very much a team sport. And uh, this is the team that stands behind every applicant who graduates from the University of St. Thomas. We have wonderful faculty in biology, chemistry, health and exercise science, um, neuroscience, and they do, uh, they, they provide support that is really crucial to making a strong application to training in any of the health professions through mentoring, through uh, academic advising, and most importantly, through um, research opportunities. Uh, St. Thomas faculty are really great about bringing St. Thomas students into their research lives and enabling them to thereby show that they have um, scientific capabilities, that they are communicators who can work in teams, that they're adaptive and resilient and eager to learn. And then, um, in, in addition to those uh, legs of the stool, you might say, what is important in having a pre-health advisor is having somebody with the subject knowledge to advise you on course selection and sequencing, what's required in different fields, in different destination schools. I also manage a community on Canvas, which is St. Thomas's online course uh, environment that is basically a 24 seven uh, all you can eat buffet of uh, advice and information on making your way from um, where you are today, which is basically a college, excuse me, a high school senior <laughs> uh, to the day that you are either matriculated uh, at a health professions training program or decide that you don't want to apply. Uh, supporting people during the application cycle is also uh, a really important thing during 
uh, this journey towards a life in the healing professions. The, wherever you apply and whatever you apply to do, the application cycle takes the better part of a year. So you really do want a team behind you. And it's my privilege to be part of that team for uh, four or 500 of my closest friends at St. Thomas. Could I have the next slide? Uh, so many admissions audiences are deeply curious about um, the numbers and I'm happy to provide these numbers from uh, the cover 2014 to 2018. And basically the big five, um, medicine, physician assistant, physical therapy, dentistry, and pharmacy. So this is the rough number of uh, applicants who've uh, gone into the application process with St. Thomas degrees. And this is their rough success rate. And as I've noted, oh, sorry, could we go back? Thank you. <laughs> as I've noted, um, national comparisons are a little difficult to come by, but um, in all of these fields nationally uh, in the aggregate, uh, acceptance rates um, are around 30 to 40%. And within the brackets that you see on this screen, the, you know, the number 60% uh, for medicine is um, very high compared to the national figure, but that still leaves 40% who do not gain admission. And I wanna note that within these numbers, uh, there, are a num there are gradations of success rates. So applicants who go into the application process with um, high GPAs and high test scores and the kinds of experience sets and support systems that St. Thomas really excels at um, do uh, experience higher success rates than you see in this average population. So I wanted to make sure that got said. Now can I have the next slide? Thank you. I'll hand it off to, um, to Dr. Lewis. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Nakisha Lewis, and I am the Associate Dean of Undergraduate and Accelerated Master's Programs here at St. Thomas. Uh, particularly, I'm in the Opus College of Business. So all of you that are out there interested in business, we will be chatting soon, I hope. Um, my topic for the next few minutes is just why a liberal arts background? And well, I'm glad you asked. Go ahead and kick me off to the next slide, Chris. So what you'll see on your screen is a couple quotes uh, from you know, a couple, uh, one person in particular you'd recognize. And so uh, Steve Jobs here describes that it's Apple's DNA that technology alone is not enough. And you can fit whatever major you want to in that little space. Um, this idea of healthcare, whatever that may be, business, it's not enough. It's the technology married with this liberal arts thing, married with the humanities that yields these results that makes our hearts sing. And that's one thing that we definitely believe and live out at St. Thomas. So it's not just this idea of the only the career path you're interested in, that those courses are what will be what changes the world or help you come up with the next invention or does this new thing in business where you completely change retail i.e. Amazon, right? It's the merger of all of that, the marrying of all of that is what will do that. Um, the next quote you see here is just a reminder, even when we talk about our skill set. So let's say our faculty are some of this amazing group of people that are on the top of the new things that are coming out. But the truth is, even some of the things that we're teaching you now in five years may look very different. Could you have imagined three years ago, we'd actually be doing everything online? Probably not. Things are morphing, things are changing. But the way that we can stay ahead of that is by giving you this liberal arts education where you're allowed to think and engage in a variety of ways. All right, next. So what are some ways and how do we do that? What does that look like and what does it mean for your career? So you'll see four different things on our screen, right? And I wanna lean into how St. Thomas does it because truthfully we know there are other liberal arts opportunities and colleges out there. But when we talk about the way that we do this uh, liberal arts interdisciplinary approach, it really leans into, into why it's relevant. And so imagine for just a moment that when you get to your higher level business or whatever you're interested in topics, you have had some course in your freshman or sophomore year that just got you thinking a little bit differently about how business could merge with perhaps, I don't know, doing some common good in the world or social justice or sociology, or maybe even that math class helps you completely think differently about how we do business and the way that we do it. 
the truth is one of the reasons why you'll engage a little bit more is because there's less people in your class for the most part. We have small class sizes at St. Thomas. And so what that means is that the person next to you, not only will you all possibly be networking with each other in the room, but you'll get the ability to really know your classmates. And what does that lead to in the future? This excellent opportunity for both networking in your industry, but also support in life. The other thing that's really relevant as we think about St. Thomas and how we are morphing and changing and how that'll impact your career path is the ability to explore. So our new curriculum that we have for our students allows for students to have more flexibility to find out what's out there. Take a few extra classes in something that interests you. So maybe by the time you get to your major field, you've shaped yourself a little bit more into something or someone that's a bit more critical in thought. When we think about the liberal arts education, it's not telling you what to know, it's telling you some creative ways to think, which really leads me to our last component that I wanna discuss on this slide. When we think about our liberal arts education, our real goal is to get you to be a more critical in thought and innovative so that by the time you get into whatever field that you're into, you can solve problems. You can look at the different components that are around you and say, hey, this will be the best way for us to be more sustainable or to change my industry or to serve as a healer for someone. Next slide. When we think about this idea of being interdisciplinary, I definitely wanted to lean into something that Jennifer said before. And it's this idea, especially at St. Thomas, we are very supportive of study abroad opportunities. Why? Because they open your thinking, expand your thinking, both about the people that are around us that we see all the time and these global experiences. And well, what does that do? The better that we can think through and place ourselves in other people's positions, uh, the better that we can then engage in our industries later, the more we can engage with different types of people and truly make impact. So not only do we have these full semester experiences, uh, we also have these short-term off-campus experiences for students as well. Last one. Beyond everything else that I've said about these liberal arts opportunities and the education that's there and how, how we do that, I wanna lean into the fact that our professors at St. Thomas have a superpower. And it's literally the ability to unleash the greatness that you already have inside of you. Whether that course is some basic intro course to art or your math course or that heavy capstone course at the end where you get a real experience with a client or you're really out in the field, all of that works together to create this liberal arts experience where all of our students walk away with something more. So when you step into your career, you know how to engage with whether it be the artistic person on your floor or perhaps someone else that's working in the research and development in. You have so many different experiences there, whether it be with faculty members and what they have to offer or with what we bring into the classroom that you are ready for in any industry that you choose. So that ends my story. I get to kick it off to one of our awesome alumni, Martha, who will share more about her experiences. Thank you so much, Dr. Lewis. Um, so as Dr. Lewis mentioned, my name is Martha. I graduated from St. Thomas in 2018. I was a neuroscience major and Renaissance program minor. And I think I'd like to think I'm what um, Al was mentioning as a an evolver. I definitely was shaped by all the experiences that I had at St. Thomas, whether it was the clubs and organizations or even studying abroad. I spent a semester doing semester at sea, um, traveling to 11 different countries over the course of four months. Um, and a lot of work experiences on campus as well helped shape um, my tra career trajectory today. And um, some of those work experiences involved um, serving as a biology lab assistant, helping out and learning, you know, the type of solutions and things that go into every lab for, um, um, for biology students, which was really exciting and really um, an informative experience. Um, I got to spend four years working as a student visit experience coordinator, which helped show me kind of business aspects, as well as just a lot of really great life, um, life decision and important information to know for life. Um, I think the most formative experience that I had on campus, though, I will say is working as a student researcher. Um, if you had asked me freshman year if I would pursue a career in research, I would have told you absolutely not. But I definitely think having 
um, three years of research experience and exposing myself to the type of work that can be done in both biology and psychology departments truly transformed my opinion and that completely changed what I wanted to do with my life. And so um, I'm fortunate enough to have had those experiences and um, spent a lot of time applying for grants and um, doing, designing my own research projects, getting to present at various conferences across the country. And um, all those opportunities and the guidance and mentorship from faculty and just their openness to truly share their experiences and teach me how best to kind of pursue and decide on um, career paths helped me a lot. And with that, I decided to get my Master of Public Health degree in Epidemiology from Columbia University. And um, during that exciting time, I got to work at the New York City Department of Health, which was another really positive experience for me. And I was managing data for a federal policy surveillance system. And that got me thinking about how health policy impacts um, health disparities that we're seeing across the country. And um, through that experience, I decided I wanted to continue pursuing my education. But like I said, I'm an evolver. So um, programs kind of changed a little bit and um, I decided to pursue my PhD in health services research. So all within public health, but various aspects of public health. And so here I am in my first year at Boston University and honestly have a lot of, I have a lot of thanks to give to St. Thomas and all the opportunities um, that I had and just the mentorship from faculty, because to this day, I'm still in contact with a lot of faculty back on campus, and they've helped me kind of navigate even the PhD application process. And so for that, I'm immensely grateful. And um, with that, I will introduce Priscilla. Thank you, Martha. Hi, everyone. My name is Priscilla. I am a current student here at St. Thomas. I'm a senior graduating this upcoming May of 2021 which is really crazy for me um, to think about. I'm a finance major and I'm minoring in econ. Um, and I like to kind of think that when I was a freshman, I really thought I was gonna go on that straight line path, major in finance, you know, graduate, become an analyst, become a portfolio manager or something like that. Um, but my work experience and just overall experience at St. Thomas has really guided my career path. And I would like to say now I'm more of an explorer and taking a different route. Um, while at St. Thomas, I've held numerous on-campus employment opportunities. Um, like Martha, I was a student visit experience coordinator for two years. Following those two, two years, um, I am now an admissions intern and I've been managing our Tommy ambassador team. So those um, are the students that you'll have a chance to speak with after you hear from us, the panelists. Um, my sophomore year, I took a computer science class. It was business focused. And after that class, my professor reached out to me and asked if I wanted to be a teaching assistant for him. I'm not a computer science major, but I accepted it and I helped him grade papers and work with his students who took the class that I did. Um, that was a really valuable experience. Obviously, you know, I'm not a computer computer science whiz, but I really got more of that Excel practice, which has helped me in the rest of my classes and in some internships I've had. Um, this past summer, before I started my senior year, I had an internship with Alti as a district manager intern. Um, when I was looking for internships during my junior year, I was kind of telling myself, you know, I like my finance major, but I'm not sure if I want um, to put all my eggs in one basket and have an internship that's solely finance based. And then when I'm looking for full time jobs, I don't have any other experience. So I took this internship, it really encapsulates, you know, all of the business majors, I did a lot of management work, operations, supply chain, um, human resources. And I loved that internship, internship so much that I'm actually um, planning to be a district manager for Aldi following graduation. I accepted a job offer from them, which I'm really excited about. Um, but throughout the school year, they also asked me if I could be an Aldi campus ambassador because they knew I went to St. Thomas. They want to continue to recruit St. Thomas students. So throughout the school year, I've worked with Jennifer in career development. Um, and I've been connecting with current students here at St. Thomas, sharing the internship and full-time job opportunities at Aldi. And that's been really valuable experience for me working with people. Again, working as a student visit experience coordinator, I realized that I like communicating with prospective students and interacting with people. And that has really shaped my career path from here. Um, I'll talk a little bit about some other relevant experiences I've had at St. Thomas. A fall of 2019, I did our London business semester and I studied abroad in London for four months. 
that was the most amazing semester I've ever had. Um, there's kind of this reputation that when you study abroad, you learn more outside of the classroom than you do in the classroom, which I can totally attest to. Um, I traveled as many weekends as I could and I reached eight other countries throughout my semester there. So I wasn't just in London for four months. Um, I talked about this a lot when I was doing my interviews and recruiters really loved to hear that I studied abroad and learned so much out of the classroom um, while I was in college. Um, throughout my senior year, I am also in the Aristotle Fund. That's a class that finance majors take, and we actually invest real money in the stock market. We choose stocks, we analyze them, we work as student analysts and portfolio manage as well. Um, again, like I mentioned, I after graduation, I'm not planning on becoming an analyst in finance, but this class has given me such great experience that if somewhere down the road I want to switch back into finance, I can really grab onto the experience I had in this Aristotle fund class. And that's a full year class too. So I'm working through it right now. And I'll work through it until I graduate in May, which is amazing. Um, and then I'm also in Beta Gamma Sigma, which is an international um, business honors society. Wow. I um, First of all, I have to say, I have been in higher education for 25 years. And if you had told me there would be a panel of six people that would get done in like 32 minutes and fill it with content, you know, less is more. There's that old quote, I believe it's attributed to Mark Twain. If I had had more time, I would have written a shorter letter. And uh, I have, that was just incredible. We got through some really good content, really good sharing. Um, and I wanna tell everyone that, uh, you know, it's a great group of panelists you just heard. Um, every single person at St. Thomas is of the caliber of the people you just heard, okay. Maybe that's not completely true, but I will say this. When we are at our best, this panel is who we are. This represents who we are. So thank you, everybody. Uh, so good to see everybody on, on the Zoom. So thank you for that. Um, I did get one quick personal question. Somebody said, I thought you were going to tell me what major I should choose and what job I should get. Uh, so that is not what we're here to do. I think you've learned. We are not going to tell you what your major is. We will not tell you what job you should get. Uh, that might cause a little consternation for any parents. Like, wait a minute, this is a reasonably large investment. Um, how should I go ahead and, um, and, and think about that when you're not going to tell me what to do? What we will do, you, do is give you an opportunity and the comfort that we will help you. And hopefully that's what you heard tonight is that this is a community that cares about everybody within it and everybody outside of it. We want to include you. We want you to come. So whether you've applied, whether you've been admitted, whether you're considering applying, we're thrilled you're here. But we wanted to come across that we care about where you go, where you'd like to go, and how we can get you there. Um, and you've heard it, I think, from all of our panelists this evening that uh, we really, really want to support you as you do that. You heard from pre-health. You've heard from a business professor who, who embraces this liberal arts uh, environment that we have. You've heard all of these wonderful background things. So let's jump into some questions and see what you guys have got on your minds. Uh, checking the Q&A real quickly here. Um, Jennifer, I think the first two kind of come for you. If you can start us off at least, and then others will, will add thoughts in. When should freshmen start connecting with career services? We tend to call them first year students here because uh, students come in with a lot of advanced placement and a lot of different things. So when should first year students start connecting with career services and when can they start applying for internships? Sure, thanks. Thank you. And thanks for the question. Good question. Um, I can tell you that two common reasons why we see first year students in the Career Development Center. Um, one would be that question about, I'm trying to decide what I really, what's the best major for me? Um, so that's a really common question that we get in that first year. Uh, whether that's, again, what if I majored in history or English? What kind of job would I get with that, right? Something basic like that. Or I've heard in business, they have this thing called operations supply chain, but I don't know what that means. And I don't know what I would be doing or where I'd be working with that. So we can help with those kinds of questions. And again, that exploration, help you explore all different facets of yourself to find a good fit, to find what's fulfilling. And the second reason that I think a lot of first year students come in is they're applying for on-campus jobs. 
And that's very common. And most students are working part time and they're being asked for a cover letter and a resume and they're being asked to interview for campus jobs. And that's what we do here too. So we'll coach people about those kinds of things. Um, the other question you asked is when can you start the internship process? Um, for sure, juniors and seniors, both years would be eligible for internships for sure. There are several types of job function areas where employers have been willing to accept sophomore applicants as well. Uh, I would say those tend to skew a little bit more towards what I consider a more technical major. And I don't necessarily mean just computer science and engineering, but I would include that operations supply chain student, that accounting student, uh, numbers oriented students as well. A lot of employers are willing to talk to those students in that sophomore year. And then we have a new engineering program here called civil engineering and they take freshmen as interns in civil engineering. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Great, thank you, Jennifer. Any other comments quickly from any other panelists on that question? It's pretty directed to career services, I think. Uh, let I me expand that there's bit. one that came in. Yeah. Go ahead, I'm sorry, Priscilla, go ahead. Yeah, I've started interacting with a career development as soon as I was a freshman. They hold a lot of workshops. So like resume building workshops, how to elevate your LinkedIn profile, how to write an amazing cover letter. So it's not necessarily having to go and meet with the counselor and ask them direct questions. They host a lot of workshops as well that are super helpful. Thank you. Wonderful, thank you. One that came in, we've had a little bit of a theme tonight of undecided major. How do I work with that? I know we've touched on it, but we did have one that came in and that said, all right, if I'm really not sure on my major, um, how do I decide? What's my best course of, of, of approach to figure that out? Any thoughts on that one? I can talk a little bit to that. So my suggestion would be is one, when you first come in, you have a set of um, your basic courses that you would take at the institution. And so when you're taking some of those introductory courses, if it feels a little bit better to you, then you can lean in that direction. But beyond that, joining our student clubs is absolutely helpful. The truth, truthfully, we have clubs for most of our majors on campus, which means if you're really, you know, I'm remotely interested in business, join one of the clubs and see what happens. We usually have a Discover Opus event. One of the other things you might find is just talking with more students on campus about what's happening. In many of our programs, we now offer introductory courses as well. So for example, in your first year at, at um, St. Thomas now in business, you can take an intro to business course. We call it B4CG or business for the common good. It covers all of the disciplines in business. And then you're able to say, you know, I really like this or I don't like any of these. The bigger thing that we want, I want to reiterate, one as both a faculty member and a dean at the Opus College, is that you have a little more time in your curriculum to figure that out. So take a little pressure off of yourself. We don't expect you to come in knowing. As I said before, there are some people that come in and they know and they stick with it and others don't. And that's okay. The truth is, even if you came in and you didn't know, you could still graduate in the four years as expected if you figured it out a little bit later because of the way the course and curriculum are set up. And after you dig in, talk with a few advisors, just talk, find out the things that you like. You come in thinking you want accounting and then you figure out, I don't even like math. That's okay. That's a part of the experience in learning and navigating and growing. Excellent, thank you. I'll pause any other panelists, that's good, good. Um, we had a question come up, it was tied a little bit to study abroad and I think Priscilla kind of touched on what her study abroad experience was like. So hopefully that covered that. Um, and I may need to make sure I'm clear on this because I focus on our high school students before our current students. But yes, the study abroad uh, for J term, we are not sending folks abroad because of the pandemic uh, and the uncertainty that remains for that. Uh, but as of right now, I think especially with you know the great news about the vaccine, on the horizon and uh, the fact that that might start being uh, deployed, if I heard it right, in the next three weeks possibly to the frontline healthcare workers, um, I would think that we would be back fully embracing study abroad uh, for next cycle by the time uh, you guys are, you high school seniors will be freshmen. So uh, I think those are the couple we had there on the study abroad. Um, 
another one we had a quick one and Jennifer you may have a view into this how many alumni are there and how accessible are they to the students alumni there are aren't we at almost 100,000 I know that there's over 65,000 alumni on LinkedIn I know that <laughs> and they're very accessible we we have um, several different ways that alumni can help and interact with students. Um, Dr. Lewis mentioned the student clubs and organizations. It's not uncommon for those students, uh, leaders to invite alumni back. And I don't know, Priscilla, if you've ever actually done a presentation for a club before, but you might be when you graduate. Uh, and, and I would hope, um, Martha, that, that your neuroscience club might ask you to come and talk about your career path. And that's so educational. Uh, we also have a tool, I call it mini LinkedIn, called St. Thomas Connect. Uh, and it is a way for our alum to be very specific about how they're willing to help our current students with their career questions. Uh, whether it's informational interviewing or full-on mentoring or in, even a job shadow experience. So we can connect students that way. And we have some LinkedIn groups uh, where alumni are mixing and mingling with our students there. Um, many, many different ways to connect students with alumni. And does anybody else have other ways to offer our alumni connections? Very good. I know that when I, uh, I've been here in the Twin Cities for about eight years, and prior to this, I was um, in Ann Arbor, Michigan at the University of Michigan. So when I moved up here, I remembered being completely impressed with how many people I ran into who were St. Thomas alumni in the area. And it did seem to keep coming up because I had actually moved up here. Um, uh, my wife had gotten a position, she's at General Mills, and um, I was commuting, believe it or not, between the Twin Cities and Detroit for a couple of years. Uh, but during the time when we were up here and I was still going back and forth, realizing, wow, everywhere I am, be at the airport or in the community or anywhere I might be, there seemed to be a disproportionate number of St. Thomas alumni. And I knew rationally we weren't the biggest campus uh, in the state, but it sure felt like that to me. So I think that's a good sign that uh, you will find a lot of St. Thomas alumni out there. And it is clearly one of the things we tout as we talk about students who might come. A real quick one, and you know, I think I'm going to save this one for the chat rooms after with the current students, because uh, I doubt that uh, Martha is an alumna who did not have to experience uh, going to school here as a, in a, during a pandemic, although maybe your boss to uh, BU experiences highlighting it. Is it more difficult to connect with other students and staff now that classes are online? And I think the answer to that has to be yes, it is. Uh, but the question is, is it still possible and is it happening? And we've heard some thoughts along those lines. Uh, Priscilla or Martha, given your uh, PhD now experience during the pandemic, any thoughts or advice for students on how to maximize that? Um, should we still be in this condition this coming fall, which knock on wood, we hopefully will not be, but thoughts on that uh, to answer that one maybe? Yeah, I can take it first. Um, you're definitely right, Al. It's definitely a little bit harder to connect with professors and faculty, but that doesn't mean that the opportunities aren't there. Um, prior to COVID and right now as well, all of our professors have office hours. So those are set hours that every single week they're in their office with the door open, um, encouraging students to come in. And throughout this pandemic, all of my professors have extended their office hours. Now they're virtual, obviously, but it's really just up to you to grasp those opportunities and know where they are. I know that professors are still more than, you know, open to speaking with students. It's just in a different environment, I guess you would say. Yeah, I'm just gonna echo Priscilla and say that you can make the most of this experience. I feel like everybody is very willing and um, in my experience at BU, but I'm sure at St. Thomas as well, just to get together and um, virtually meet. So I'd say definitely reach out to faculty, reach out to staff, reach out to other students and make those connections online. I, um, I have this great hope that we will have learned so much from this as far as efficiency. Uh, I had not been on a Zoom meeting prior to March of this year, and I can see already a lot of times when I'm going to like to be able to do this. Uh, Martha and Priscilla join us tonight because of Zoom. So I think there's these advantages, but I sure am excited to get back to uh, hopefully this fall, a very normal fall of being on campus and being safe um, as we do it. So hopefully that'll be the case when we get there. Um, real quick question, um, if you decide, and I don't know, Michael, you might be the one for this, if you decide to switch majors, is it difficult to switch? 
Uh, no, no, not, not, not difficult at all. And I would say uh, some very large proportion of, of people I work with at St. Thomas changed their major at one point or another. I want to say as high as 40%. And there's no reason to believe that that should be any lower. The, you know, the experience of uh, studying a given subject at the college level is just very, very different than it is in high school. Uh, you, no matter where you go to college, your instructors uh, generally have master's degrees or PhDs in the field that they're teaching, more often PhDs. And so the teaching is very different. The expectations are very different. And um, people's experience of a subject matter in high school is just not a really strong predictor of what it's going to be like to major in something in college. And uh, everybody at the, at the undergraduate advising level at St. Thomas um, totally gets that. And uh, w there's an entire office at, um, the, at the St. Paul campus that's dedicated to, to technical advising and assistance on, um, okay, if I change my major to this, what will be my, uh, what will be the ramifications for my planning later on down the line? And I also work with uh, people to settle the question of, uh, you know, if I change my major from X to Y or from Y to Z, can I still apply to medical school, dental school, pharmacy? And <clears throat> um, spoiler alert, you totally can. No matter where you go to college, uh, what you major in is, you know, it, it should be something that you love. And that's exactly what uh, professional schools in, in, in the health professions are looking for too. I wanna add just one little piece to that too. Hi, I'm Chris, I'm an admissions counselor here. Um, it is really easy for students to switch their majors back and forth because you don't need to apply to a specific school as well. So you don't need to apply to the uh, School of Business or the School of Engineering. Um, you just apply to St. Thomas as a whole and then you can choose from there. And if you decide to switch, um, you don't have to like apply to a whole new school. That's just one thing I wanted to add in there. Thank you, Chris. Um, switch a degree, uh, gears a little bit. There was a question that came through. It said, are there tryouts for St. Thomas basketball team or is it just people that received offers? Um, it's kind of both yes, right? Um, most of you are aware, if not, that we are in the process of becoming a division one school. We'll be the first school ever to go directly from division three to division one. And uh, you who are here tonight will be the first class that comes in uh, when we will be a division one school. So we are learning a lot as we go through that. It is a huge change to make. Uh, my advice to that question is get in touch with the coach. Uh, you can go on our site, go to the athletics department, get in touch with the coach. Uh, the coaches are the ones who kind of build their teams, talk to students, become aware of them and work with them. Uh, and so they will kind of get a look at you and uh, many students I know send uh, tryout tapes and recordings of themselves and uh, let the coach take a look at that. So that's the direction there is to, uh, to work with the coach directly uh, as far as that goes. Somehow Minnesota had become one of only, I think it was six states that had only one division one university. Uh, the others were like Alaska, Hawaii, and other, some really small states back east. So um, I think this is correcting a wrong by us becoming a Division I school, so that at least we now will have two. So that is, uh, is one that came in there. Um, quick question on, uh, what was I wanted to see here? Um, oh, career fairs. Jennifer, this might be a good one for you, or Priscilla, possibly for you. How are career fairs working with things being online now? The fact that we've had these virtual career fairs, which, you know, that's a really different proposition than, than the live ones used to be. Uh, Jennifer, thoughts on that? And Priscilla, I don't know if you've had to attend any or not. Everything's virtual. Uh, it's, uh, I can't tell you, I actually, the, the Minnesota private college system was participating in virtual career fairs in 2012. We were ahead of our time. <laughs> and so the transition for some of us who've been around for a while wasn't that huge, but it's amazing how many new companies have cropped up and how there are different styles and ways to do virtual career fairs, but it, it happens. Um, some people are even trying to use Zoom to do these kinds of things. So 
nothing has stopped. It's amazing. Uh, the Minnesota Private College Fair, which has usually 300 companies and 2,000 students, instead of being at the convention center, is going to be online in February. And so nothing is stopping. Um, I'm, I don't know if that answers the question, but uh, everybody's figured out the technology and most people are pretty happy with it. Do you have any experiences, Priscilla, yet? Okay, Priscilla, okay, good. Um, I wanna, again, as we look, keep my eye on the clock here. Uh, here's one, I think it's David sent in. How do you see successful students growing in general from their first year to their senior year? And so this is wide open, I think, for everybody. It's kind of a fun one to think about. And, uh, you know, I love this when I used to coach on interviews. It's a great end to the interview question is, you know, what have you seen other candidates do that really, really did well when they came into this role? Uh, so I, I love this question. Thoughts that when you all think about students who came in as first year students and ultimately became seniors and graduated, uh, what are some of the ones that stand out and how did they change and how did they grow uh, during their time at St. Thomas? I would say that they were open to opportunity and open to learning. And whether that learning was this is different from what I expected or this was exactly what I thought, they were open. And so they tend to attend different types of events. And so the way that their thinking changed as they were there, not necessarily you know their moral fiber, but literally the way they thought about people and community and changing the world and all of that piece. And so, you know, literally, I've seen it where it's it's not just even just a focus on the grades for them, but just becoming and making impact in a different way. So that fourth year they're coming out, yeah, I had some amazing classes, Dr. Lewis, but you know, it was really impactful for me, that really hard class that I didn't like as much I thought, it, it changed me in a new way. And so I would argue that, you know, if we were thinking about that from a career, emotional perspective and a career perspective, it was the students that came in open and ready to learn and understanding that they didn't have to have it all together or have to know it all. And those were the ones that I saw do some absolutely amazing things because they were curious. The only thing I would add is take risks. Raise your hand, right? Do something more. Okay, yeah, you're going to sit there in a student club meeting. Well, maybe you want to run for the executive board. Maybe you have a leadership position. Maybe become an RA, something like that. Just stretch yourself, grow, and try more than one internship or more than one type of job experience and, and different size employers because the environments are completely different. And there is a place for each one of us. And you'll find it with the more experiences you have. Wonderful. I am, um, again, keeping an eye on the clock, I'm going to start to move us uh, toward wrapping up. First of all, I need to thank again uh, this panel. What a delight. I uh, And I do not say this every time I host a panel. This was just such a great group, so sharing, so giving, so responsive, and uh, uh, good to see all of you. And, and I really, really want to say thank you. Um, and again, representative, as I said, of us when we were at our best here at St. Thomas. Um, so if you, there was a couple of questions on about a major in law, what would be a good minor, some engineering internship opportunities. I'm going to encourage everyone who's on uh, that if you um, have such a question, uh, pick out one of the panelists. Uh, those in particular probably could go toward Jennifer, I would think, as far as internships and those searches. Uh, but any one of us, I think I speak for all, all six of us, would be thrilled to receive a question. It would just flatter us if you uh, had a question you want to send to us directly. We'd love to hear from it. Uh, we are here to help you, want to help you. We have put up on the screen, I believe now, uh, a way to contact us broadly, and the team will get you to whomever you would like to speak with uh, if it was a panel. Analysts, so feel free, please, to do that. Um, and then also in the chat, we will in a moment or so here have the link because we have several students who are going to hang out for a while afterwards uh, to field questions uh, from the student perspective so that any of you who want to know about that uh, can feel free to go ahead and check that out. And thank you, Chris, that link is now up in the chat 
icon at the bottom of your screen. So once again, thank you for your interest in St. Thomas. Uh, I hope that each of you finds a place you want to be and loves it and has great success wherever it may be. Of course, we hope it's here at St. Thomas. Uh, we would love to have you come here. We would love to help you find your path. We would love to help you be successful, however you choose to define that. So best wishes, everyone. Have a great evening, and let us know how we can help you. Thank you so much.